So one of the questions that I'm asked most about when it comes to voiceover work is where do I get the work? Where do I find the clients? Because the truth is, it really doesn't matter how talented you are. It doesn't matter how well trained you are, how prepared you are, how great your equipment is. You may have the best microphone, the best home studio. The truth is, regardless of how good and how prepared you are, clients will not line up at your door waiting to hire you for voiceover work. The reality is this, and keep this in mind if you're considering getting into the field, and that is this, at least this is the way I look at it. My job is about 50% actual voiceover work. The other half of my job, the other 50%, is actually going out and finding the work through marketing, through promotions, and sales. So if you're not ready to either do that or to learn that, um, you might want to consider a nine to five job because it really takes somewhat of an entrepreneurial spirit and a business mind to be successful in voiceover. So when it comes to, cre to getting clients and generating and be beginning to build your income, how does that work? Well, here's the way I look at it. You want to create as many streams of income from as many different, uh, different areas as you can. I like to think of it as like a mutual fund. Uh, all of my clients and the areas in which I get my clients is kind of like a portfolio that I manage. And if I lose a client, which as a matter of fact, I was doing a narration, a training narration today, in which uh, there was a statistic given that the average business loses about 10% of their clients in attrition every year. Now, I think mine's a little bit less than that, but let's say on average it is 10%. If you only have two clients and you lose one of your clients, that's going to be a big ding to your income. However, if you've got 50 clients, 60 clients, 70 clients, and you lose a client, and that's happened to me before. I've, I've lost several larger clients uh, along the way who decided for one reason or another they no longer needed voiceover work. And um, when that happened, I was okay. It really did not impact my income all that much because I had so many other clients and sources of voiceover revenue coming in. So let's look first of all at the different niches, and I probably won't hit all of them, but there are a lot of different areas of voiceover work. There are audiobooks, there are commercials, movie trailers, promos, radio imaging. Um, it seems like everybody and their brother has a YouTube video that they want to have narrated. There's telephony on hold and all of that kind of thing. So a lot of different areas in which you can become uh, involved in voiceover work and I would encourage you especially if you're just getting started to explore all of those and the longer you're involved you'll find that there are some things that you're better at than others now I still I'm still involved in now I don't do movie trailers and right now I'm not doing TV promos but I do record audiobooks I do a lot of training narration I do a lot of commercial work I do a lot of telephony work so my portfolio as I like to think of it is is fairly diversified so first of all you want to get into as many niches as you possibly can at least at first to experiment again to find out what you might be good at maybe some areas that you should avoid the other thing, once you've, once you've looked at that and explored all of that, is where do you go to actually find clients within those areas? And there are different areas that you can look in. And again, you want to think of this as a portfolio as well, a wide selection of, uh, of avenues in which you can find work. Agents. Uh, don't expect to go out and get an agent and then to get enough work to take care of you and your family because most likely except maybe in very, 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 very rare exceptions, um, it doesn't work that way. But an agent can be a source of income. I Personally, I have 14 agents in the US, Canada, and Europe, and if I lost all of my agents tomorrow, it would barely impact my income. Uh, but it is a source of income, so jobs through agents. There are pay-to-play sites. You may have heard of Voice123 and Voices.com, and it seems like uh, every other week or so there's another one uh, popping up. I think there's voiceplanet.com and others. And this is where you pay uh, typically an annual fee and then uh, you are supplied with auditions. And interestingly enough, it seems that sometimes agents actually cast through these pay-to-play sites. So you may see if you have agents and you're getting uh, auditions through voices.com, you may, you may see the same script coming through several different avenues. But that's okay. That's just kind of a side note, something to be aware of. Uh, there are commercial production companies, companies out there that strictly produce radio commercials, some that uh, do television commercials, some that do both. There are video production companies out there that do everything from, uh, from corporate videos to training videos to television commercials, uh, kind of one-stop video shops. They're a great source of work. 
uh, as a voiceover artist, you want to have some clients that you work directly with instead of working through an agent or through a pay to play site or uh, through a production company. Uh, if you can find those that you can work with directly, that, that's good as well. Uh, freelance sites on the web can be a good source. Uh, they tend to pay a little less, uh, at least that's been my experience as, I, as I've done my research, but that can be a source of income uh, or finding clients, which ultimately results in income. So how do you go about that? Okay, we know the different niches and we know some of the avenues in which we, we can find the, uh, the areas in which to find those clients. So how do I actually, when, it, when the rubber meets the road, when it's time to get busy and to get some work, how do you do that? Well. There are a couple ways you can do that, and one is probably the most uncomfortable, and that is cold calling. Um, I have done a, quite a bit, and as I when I need to build up my client list, and right now actually I have almost more clients than I know what to do with. So uh, once you build your client list, you spend more time recording and less time looking and looking for uh, looking for work. But occasionally, due to client attrition, you'll need to go out and find new work. So cold calling. Uh, you, could, you could buy or find a directory of video production companies. As a matter of fact, one giant source is Mandy's or Mandy.com, Mandy's list, Mandy.com. And it is probably the most comprehensive directory of video production companies uh, in the world. And you could simply start looking up companies and their websites, getting contact information, making phone calls, asking if they're accepting demos from voiceover artists. Uh, I have been really shocked at the positive response that I've received. I can't think, and I've contacted many, 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 uh, more than I can even count, but I cannot remember any negative response in that, in terms of being rude. I occasionally will be told, well, we're not accepting demos right now. But usually I'm told, yeah, sure, go ahead and email us your demo, and at the very worst, we'll keep it on file. And uh, most of the people you contact, you have to realize, you won't get work from. It's a sales game. You fill your sales funnel with lots of possibilities, and occasionally a few drop out of the bottom of the funnel, and you get work from them. So uh, cold calling, that's one way to do it. You want to get listed on as many sites and with as many video production companies as possible. Here's how I've done that over the last several years. I use Google extensively. I have Googled terms like uh, voice roster, uh, voice talent, uh, voice lineup, and through that, and I still do that on occasion to make sure that nothing slips through my fingers or that a new company hasn't popped up. And every time I find uh, a, a TV production company or a radio production company that lists voice talent on the web, I always contact them and ask to submit my voiceover, uh, my voiceover demo. As a matter, I'm listed with more than I could tell you right now. I don't know, maybe 20 or 30 and I probably have anywhere from 60 to 70 clients that I get work from on some on a very frequent basis and some on a very sporadic basis. But again, think in terms of activity, lots of activity. You want to get your demo into the hands of many people as possible. You want to be listed on as many rosters as possible. So cold calls, use Google extensively. And here's another one. This is a bit controversial. I use Craigslist extensively as well. Uh, when I first started uh, my voiceover business, I used Voice One Two. I almost built my business with Voice One Two Three dot com, but due to some changes they've made in their algorithm, which I don't totally understand, uh, they now choose for you which auditions you can and you can't submit to, and the and the more you submit, uh, you tend to be penalized in terms of the number of ad of auditions that they give you, and so on. And I won't get into all of that. But the point being, I don't get nearly as much work from that. Only a few jobs a year, where I used to get several jobs a week from Voice One Two Three. But Craigslist, and for reasons that I won't go into right now, um, there seems to be better and better. I've actually gotten national work from Craigslist. Now, keep in mind, again, it's like mining for gold. You're not going to go into Craigslist every day and find great gigs. You may go for days, weeks, months. But some of my best clients now are clients that I have found through Craigslist that give me regular work, that pay me well, that have become a really a staple of my business. So those are just a few things, a few areas that I, that I hope are helpful for you as you go out to find work as a voiceover artist. But remember, it's, it's not easy. I mean, it's, it's simple, but it's not easy. But you have to constantly look 
for new prospective clients, you have to contact them through either telephone, email, postcards, or both, and you have to submit your demo as much as possible. And you have to be vigilant, always looking for opportunities. Hey, thanks for it, for checking in, and I wish you great success in recording voiceovers.